This is the first prototype of the robotic arm. It's a very basic design, just some fingers affixed to an acrylic board, and it was designed to answer some basic questions, such as, how should we design the fingers? What should the fingers be constructed out of? How will we make them bend properly? How should the overall shape of the hand be? How much torque will we need to pull each finger? Let's answer each question. The first question was, how did we design the hand? We designed each finger as a trapezoidal cut. These trapezoidal cuts on each segment meant that when each segment bent into each other, it would all join to form a 90 degree angle, which would then ensure that the finger bent properly. The second question was, what should we design each finger out of? We used plastic for this model because it was very light it was, and it was still sturdy. The plastic was also easily shapeable so that we could cut each segment into a trapezoid. The third question was, how do we make the fingers bend? Well, that's kind of tricky. The trapezoidal cuts alone won't make the fingers bend because they'll fall apart far before they bend. So what we did was we attached them with duct tape so that while they were bending, they would still be attached and we used hinges on the undersides of each trapezoidal cut to expedient the bending. We then threaded cables through each of the fingers anchoring them at the fingertips. That way, when we pulled on the other end of the cable, the entire finger mechanism would bend. The fourth question was very relatively easy to answer. All we had to do was copy the relative shape of a human hand, with the thumb farther below the rest of the four fingers. The fifth question, how much torque we need, was answered by measuring the amount of pull we exerted on each finger, and then measuring the same amount of pull on a weight scale. The final answer, we exerted 15 ounce inches of torque on each finger. Now that we had the answers to our questions, we wanted to implement those answers on a simpler platform to test the servos on, so we purchased a grabber toy. It was small, inexpensive, and its fingers were designed automatically to bend, so we modified it. We added a base plate to the palm of the toy and mounted a Futaba hobby servo with a 9.5 kg centimeter force on said base plate. We then threaded cables through the fingers of the hand and attached them to the servo's circular horn. The horn was chosen for its shape because we could provide optimal mounting choices with the cables. The horn was pre-turned so that very little turning force on the servo would pull, spin the horn and pull the cables and bend the fingers. We then mounted an Arduino above the servo horn. This way, the Arduino would disguise the servo and the cable mechanism. We then secured the Arduino using Lego bricks and also added the Bluetooth receiver to the Arduino mounting. Then we wired the servo to the Arduino. To power all the electronics in the hand, we mounted a 9-volt battery on the underside of the hand next to the base of the servo motor. We then connected that 9-volt battery to the Arduino, which would then power the servo and the Bluetooth receiver as well as itself. This is the second prototype of my robot hand. It's much more compact, nicer to look at, and it's actually being electronically powered. There are four components to this hand. There is the actual hand itself, which we use with, to construct out of a small kit we found online, the Arduino Duemono, which we use as the brain of the entire operation, the Bluesmart serial communication, which serves as the link between the Arduino and the NeuroSky MindWave, which we use to read our brainwaves so we can control the robot hand, and a battery servo mechanism in the back, which we use to both power and move the robot hand. The NeuroSky headset reads the brainwaves of the user. It then sends those brainwaves as information to the Bluetooth receiver, our Bluesmurf. The Bluesmurf module then forwards the brainwave information to the Arduino microcontroller. Meanwhile, a computer has uploaded a program to the Arduino microcontroller. That program will tell the Arduino what to do with the brainwave information. In our case, the program tells the Arduino to read the attention brainwaves from the user and use that measure as to determine when it should spin the servo motor. That servo motor, when spun, will then spin some ropes that connect to the fingers, thus when the servo spins, the fingers will bend as well. In a nutshell, when you concentrate, you bend the fingers. I am now going to demonstrate the movement of the robot hand remotely through my brainwaves. To prove that I am not controlling them by my hand, I will keep them securely in my pocket. Watch. I'm going to turn on my headset now, and you can watch as the robot hand moves of its own accord. Or, not of its own accord, of my brainwaves.
The green light is, is the blue firm for establishing connection with the, my, uh, the Arduino and my headset. My hands are still in their pockets. So what comes next? We plan to reintegrate the servo mechanism into the first hand prototype. Then we are going to construct an elbow mechanism to enable the whole hinge to move up and down. A wrist addition will let the wrist rotate and it might be in the works, but blink detection is currently underway to enable eye blinks to act as another form of control over the two degrees of freedom from the elbow on the hand currently offered. Finally, we plan to package all of these mechanisms into a pleasing, accessible, user-friendly prosthetic hand. We hope you were pleased with the progress we have made. We are pleased with the progress we have made, and we hope to post another video showing even more progress soon. Thank you for watching this video.